Hey everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat and I'm talking to you with Craig. Hello. Hello, Christian. Thanks for having me on. This is really exciting. Thank you. No, it's great to have you. I'm always excited to talk to uh, brand spanking new MVPs. Uh, no, I reach out to both, you know, uh, I was going to say young and old. Age has nothing to do with it. <laughs> you know, long time MVPs as well as brand new MVPs. But Craig, for folks that don't know you, who are you? Where are you? And what do you do? I am Craig White. I am a power platform ecosystem architect. Um, I work in the UK for a partner called ANS. Um, I think quite a few people in the community have probably started to hear of us, ANS in the UK, because we've got a lot of well-known MVPs that are working for us. Um, so I'm now honoured to be part of that that clang. Uh, we have a really good time working at ANS. So um, yeah, we've got lots of really cool stuff in the power platform, not just building solutions for people, but my area of expertise, I guess, is helping organisations to scale up and build their own solutions which at the end of the day is what low code has always been about i think um so yeah that's what i do for for a living outside of that i uh participate heavily in the community i'm on the forums i've got my own power platform blog that i've been uh, running for about a year now um i'm married i've got a kid um yeah all the usual stuff really so yeah happy days it, you know it's something that you said too about uh your, your multiple mvps in your company I don't, do you, do you, how many are in your company uh i think it's like five or six now yeah. um yeah i think really we cool right like i've got four in my company it's it's there's something to be said about uh i've worked for companies that were not supportive so i'm a 12-time mvp i've worked for a couple of companies that were not supportive of yeah. that of that role and the community activities and then thankfully when i started as an mvp to where i am now very supportive understand uh, you know, uh, what it means, the value of having MVPs, uh, as well as supportive of the some of the extracurricular activities that we that we have. Yeah, for long. Yeah, and I think that's important. I think like I work in consultancy. So, you know, I'm not daft enough to think, well, if I can charge out an MVP at a slightly higher rate, you know, it's good for business, you know, in, in terms of that commercial setting. But I think it's also good for the, like the marketing for the companies. Lots of our people we work with not just the mvps actually but some really cool technical guys that are absolutely brilliant we're all over socials we've all got our blogs it's just a really good community feel because of that presence that we've got in the community and we've got like big personalities that lots of people i'm sure have heard of in the community the mvps and it just creates a really great place to work because it feels like the community every single day when we're working it doesn't feel like like we're going to a conference like we're going to the office but we're going to see our mates. We're going to have a good time. We're going to talk about tech and just geek out for seven hours. And then we're going to ring up our clients and do the same thing. Like, I think there's just that internal value of big personalities willing to share knowledge. That's all we're doing is just creating our own community feel inside the building. Um, and I, I don't think you can understate that as a, a great place to work when you've got big personalities like that willing to share. And, um, and then obviously you say support people to kind of, um, do their own thing. Like I, I wasn't blogging a year ago, um, but I work with Chris Huntingford and Lewis Baber. Um, I'm sure you've seen Lewis Baber do his 365 uh, blogs in 365 days last year. He was a massive support for me to um, to get my own blog up and running. And I would have had that opportunity had he not come to work in the same company and have that kind of community yeah. feel. So I, there's I, a huge amount of benefit. I didn't realize he was doing that. I need to talk to him. I, I'm on, I'm almost to two and a half years. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going for a thousand blogs in a thousand days. That's uh, epic. Yeah. So, Lewis did it last year. I think he managed it. Uh, but he was saying in the background, I think towards the end of the year, oh, he had a lot on his plate. He did a lot of uh, really cool it's stuff. It's a lot. Work. Yeah. And he lot. said to me, like, he, I said to him, have you got any more advice for me about blogging? He's like, yeah, don't ever do this again. Like, he, yeah. I think it was, like, it was a <laughs> well, lot on his plate, but I think he's well, glad he's done it. And, and what, well, what a cool thing to do. Um, well, you know, it, it's so it, it, like, it. look, it's it's great. To, to have the metric i so i joke half jokingly said that. i'm like i'm a you know uh, not a uh, i'm a very competitive guy if you like knew my kids you know uh and, and my my strategies on parenting when they were younger it'd be like you know i had one daughter and then three younger boys so she's the oldest and i would do this like you know hey who could uh you know who could clean up the rooms the fastest and she's like yeah <laughs> work on me i'm like I'm like, oh, your brothers are beating you. And then she'd run off, you know, and so, <laughs> you know, build, build a strategy. So I've got a good friend, fellow MVP, Tracy Vanderskift down in South Africa. 
and she did the 365 and 365 a few years back and wow. so i i said i told her i'm going to do it uh 365 days plus a week just so i could claim <laughs> it longer than her she's like I well like i'm just going to start it up and do it again so i've not stopped so i hit my two year mark the end of august and so here i That's am amazing. continuing through but it's a lot of work and it is. I, I say that, you know, it, this is, we were kind of talking about this a little bit before we started recording. Um, you know, when you look at the community contributions and I mean, it's different for everybody. You can't but, hold yourself to that same standard. Like if somebody went and looked at me like, well, to be an MVP, I've got to do like what Christian does. I'd be like, no, there's something wrong with me for wanting to pursue that much <laughs> more, like, more, and do all, all, the, all the other content and work that I do. Yeah, but, um, yeah. and it's, I think, I I was in a very the same mental space. I was like, what, what's the point of me contributing to the Power Platform community when you've got these absolute gods of the community like Shane Young, Reza Durrani, Matt Devani, and like outside looking in, you think, well, how I can't compare to those guys. I've been doing it for years. They've got great content, and I would be where I am without their content i've learned from them for the last few years it's been fantastic but again as lewis said to me um he said there's always someone who's going to learn and certainly for the power platform but i'm sure across all of microsoft 365 there's always people that are coming in new so actually i could be to someone today what matt devani or shane young have been to me for the last few years it's just it's a timing thing yeah. finding the right content at the right time and actually it doesn't matter how big i am someone can find my content it's going to help them in a moment of need yeah. there's a lot of value in that and not, not to compare yourself to what they've done but it's also like what you blog about they might have done it a few years ago but the the products have moved on a little bit there might be better they, ways they have, and, or a different context to bring to the game well, like and I, you I might be reaching a different finance, audience it might be a different vibe right, right? So yeah yeah you bring your own context to the right. game and, and yeah like you say don't judge yourself by others just do your own thing uh and what makes you happy right that's well, there's, you know, that's, that's a great point because, well, one, I just want to back up and say, we don't need to be feeding into Shane Young's ego anymore. So <laughs> let's not talk about him anymore. Um, but no, uh, I, I was just tweeting to him. Actually, uh, I used to, I created a funny t-shirt years ago. It's out in my Twitter right now. Uh, like every time someone does a single server install, God kills a kitten. And it has a little picture of kitten on there. <laughs> I think there. I seen that last yeah. week. Yeah. So I used funny. to, I when when he and Todd Clint used to go and do their um, uh, IT pro sessions, I would show up with a giant box of those t-shirts and give them out to their audience. Of course, branded with my company that they were friendly to. <laughs> of course. Know. But but anyway, uh, it, no, it's it's uh, yeah. You can't compare yourself to that. The other side no. of that is you made a great point about even though somebody may have written about that, the technology's changed. Your mm -hmm. perspective, your experience is different. Um, your path to the answer to that, um, the constituency, the audience you have might be very different. People that have yeah. never heard of Shane, those three or four people in the world in this space, you know, and yeah. so they've never come across those other blog posts. Exactly. So you, you shouldn't go and look at, hey, someone's done this before, therefore I'm not going to go and write this blog post, do this video, this demo. Um, you should generate because that also limits your learning. I mean, it's that's something to be said about like I, one of the reasons I blog is because it's an extension of my brain, of my memory. Yeah. Of I have like, to write school. things down otherwise I forget them. Yeah, right. So if I, yeah, and it's funny that the stories you can probably hear. I'm sure you've had this as well. You go and search for something online, and your own blog comes up to the top. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, I've got a blog about that. I, I've got the code. I can go and do whatever. It's my own. Yeah, just mind stamps, I guess, just to kind of make sure that I've got that knowledge because I will forget it, especially those sort of niche things you don't do every day. It's like right. a, a quirky requirement for a customer. You built a really elegant solution, but it's not something that's going to pop up loads of times. But I'm going to write that down because if I need that in the future or someone else does, I'll be like, hey, I've got a blog for that. Like, pick the brains out of that. It might have changed a little bit, but here's a here's a foundation for you to work from. Do, um, but yeah, it's good for good for yourself, isn't it? Just to kind of do, keep. Do you ever go back? <laughs> do you ever go back and find through something that you've created, something that you've written, to be like, well, that was actually pretty good. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I think there's, there's some stuff I look at. I think yeah, that was a pretty cool blog. And I did. Yeah. Um, lots of people have been following my blog. Um, so now I started by doing a, building a power platform solution with my wife because she's just started a, a, a self-employed business. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big fan of saying, well, like, anyone can build the low-code platforms. It doesn't always have to be like business. And it's, she's running a business, but not like a Fortune 500 company or like a massive, a massive conglomerate, let's say. Anyone can build with low-code. 
Um, so that was a different context. There might have been some, you know, the same things that other people blog about, but it's a different context. But there was a part of that app that I've not found anywhere online a particular technique of how to do. It took me a while to work it out. It might not be this very streamlined method, but I found a technique that no one else has blogged about. And then randomly, a couple of weeks ago, someone put a comment on the blog. And I, it's been up there for about six or seven months. I went, this is exactly what I need. Thank you very much. And you know what? I know I can't compare myself to all the millions of subscribers than other people, other bigger content creators have got. But that one comment, that's like a drug to me. It's yeah. like, I've helped one person. That is wicked. That is the whole point of my blog. I'm happy that I've, if someone else had that requirement, it's very niche. And they found what they were looking for and it's able to help them. I was like, yes, that's you what know, it's all about, right? There was, uh, so er early on when I started speaking at events, um, there was, uh, you know, people would say, oh, I got to watch out for those hecklers in the crowd. And I was like, uh, you know, for a couple, first couple of years, I'm like, I've never really had a heckler. Yeah, I've had fair. people that, but what I've seen where, where is that, and what I love, like in addition, like getting people to say, yes, this helped me. This is exactly what I was looking for. Love that. It's why I started doing productivity tips um, across Microsoft 365 was because quirky things, sometimes brand new features, sometimes features that have been around for years, but people just don't know about it no, totally. and, and do those. And, and, and people would have like an aha moment, but I also love it when I share something and somebody comes in and say, you know what? I had a similar issue. We went about it differently. This is how we solved it. And be like, wow, yeah. I never considered that other option. And how that that fits in okay, because again it's an extension it's a way for me to learn i learn through sharing, talking about yeah. writing about it yeah sharing that, exactly and, interacting. that. and that's like if i had not started my own blog i wouldn't have had opportunities like this or other people reaching out to my blog and going hey that's a really nice article did you know you could do it it's a different way no i didn't i'll update my blog and i'll give you some credit to say hey this person's got another method and then you start having more chats again oh did you know you could do this no i didn't yeah. And like that could be, I've in the last little year or so, I've done that with just people in the community following my blog. I've done that with other MVPs. I was like, if I'd have not started my blog, I would have not a done this article that I thought was quite cool. I'd have then not learned some better techniques how to do things. I don't go and tell my friends at work, hey, check out this technique that someone else has let me know. Um, that bit of code that's like fifty lines, we can actually do it in four. Isn't that really cool? Someone told me that, and it's just that opportunity to learn, isn't it, from other people's experiences yeah. and views. So again. If you're ever kind of sitting here listening and thinking, oh, I should have start my own blog and comparing yourself to other people, that's another good reason just to get started because it opens up doors to have those interactions with other people. And, you know, that's where you learn and that's where they learn as well. You can probably tell them some bits that they didn't know. And it's, uh, yeah, it's just that kind of cross networking and sharing with each other. It's really cool, right? Well, you've now entered into the realm of now people will be approaching you saying like, Craig, how did you do it? What's the path? You know, what, uh, you know, how do I go become an MVP? We were talking a little bit about this, but what is your origin story? Like, how did you uh, find out about the program? Because you've been doing this stuff. You've been in this space for a long time. So what uh, was that yeah. path like? And what how, that, how do you answer that question now? To How do you talk to somebody that wants to get on that path? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Probably not like a very simple answer. But um, for first and foremost, I've wanted to blog for years. You mentioned Tracy earlier on. Um, I actually used one of her blogs in 2015-16 to ed edit promoted links in SharePoint. And it's like back in those days when I was using other blogs, it's like I've always been fascinated by actually doing a blog because I thought, hey, this is really cool. People find things out and share it. That's a good idea. Um, and as I kind of went through my career, I got to a point in like 2015-16, I'd heard of the MVP program and I'd seen these badges and I was like, oh, wow, cool, a badge. That looks fun. Didn't really understand much about the program, but I was putting these people on pedestals to say, well, wow, actually, they must know everything because they've got this special badge. And, oh, I'd like this special badge. Wouldn't it be cool? Um, and I was speaking to an MVP at the time. I can't remember his name. I wish I did. But we had a little bit of to and fro from Twitter talking about the SharePoint REST API, uh, proper geeking out. Um, and he said, oh, what? Yeah, are, you, are you an MVP? I was like, no, I wouldn't want to be an MVP. And uh, I remember his advice and a message many years ago to say, if you want to become an MVP, don't try to become an MVP. I didn't really understand that for a while. Mm. And then like time went on and I had a child and like those kind of things right. just went out of my head. Yeah. Um, and it's last year that I kind of, well, a couple of years ago, I sort of really started to understand what community was all about. I understand more about the award. It's not people that know everything. It's people that share what they know. It's a completely different thing. 
And I was like, okay, cool. And I know some MVPs and they're really cool and I've learned from them, but I never really thought of myself as an MVP. But I knew I wanted to do a blog. And that's how I got started last year. I uh, thought, you know what? I'm going to start. If I don't start, I'm never going to start. And like my, my daughter's got her bit, so my wife's got her business. I want to do something for me. Well, I'm not husband, I'm not daddy, I'm me. And I want to do my blog. So I just started, got a regular cadence, got some good traction. I didn't purposely start a blog to become an MVP, but it's just sort of, we were talking before we started the recording, like I see that sort of award, like uh, employee of the month. Yeah. You know, it's a, uh, if you work hard and you put the effort in, good rewards will come. You, you can't physically make an employee award happen. You yeah. can try too hard sometimes right. and you're still not going to get that award and the person next to you might get it. And then you might think, oh, they shouldn't have got it last month. Whatever, it doesn't matter. If you yeah. keep working yeah. hard and doing stuff, all that sort of other really cool things like pay rises and promotions and, and awards and accolades, that just sort of comes over time. If you just do the things well, that you love, well, do the things you enjoy or work hard, Good things will always happen, right? Well, so that's the that's, way I always Yeah, do. exactly. And, and look, it's, it, you may never uh, you know, uh, earn the MVP award for a number of different reasons. And a lot of it yeah. is, and it's something that's really hard is, is that we may be doing a lot of stuff, but most of the things that we do in the community, I mean, nobody sees it, you know, like we're, we're in yeah. there or it's, it's, you know, and which is fine. And, and I agree with you. Like, I think whether you believe in karma or just like doing good out there, I mean, there are definitely benefits. So we, we don't do stuff for the community for the benefit. Like, what am I going to get out of this? Yeah. But there are benefits. The, the benefits of being more connected means that you can more easily find help, find answers yes. to questions. Yeah. You're more connected that way when you're looking for work, when you're looking for solution providers, when you like, Hey, has anybody had this experience to get feedback and input? So to the, to put together and you know, collaborate more easily, that's a massive benefit. And then of course there are other things like if you're speaking more, if you're getting in the habit of writing more, like I, English is a minor, my undergrad, you know, writing a lot. I love writing. Some people so absolutely I... hate it and they're not good at it. But to be able to articulate and organize logically, here's the problem set. Here's how I approached it. Here is the result. And yeah. to get in the habit of doing that. I often say like I got my uh, MBA in technology management like 20 something years ago. And the, what it did was I was writing like two papers a week for two and a half years. Wow. And so it got me to work with other people in groups to think about it, but to outline to yeah. like, here's the approach. Here's our, our, what we actually did. Here's the result. Here's the benefit to do that over and over and over again. And it's, it's just like that. If you're sharing, if you get in the habit of sharing um, the, and working out loud is another way working out loud. Um, yeah, if I like you're that. like it's a hammer person, yeah. th that's where that kind of comes from. Yeah. Um, but again, it's something that it will open you up to other opportunities. People sharing more information with you the more that you share, and there's benefits. The cherry on top is that then Microsoft sees that and says, "Hey, we yeah, want to be exactly MVP." That. Yeah, and I think it's not just the uh, obviously it's fantastic. It's like I still I'm a fresh MVP. I've only been an MVP a couple of weeks. And it's, I haven't sunk in yet. It still feels and sounds a bit odd, but it's nice. Um, but yeah, it's also the other benefits you have. Not only does it expand your network for me, um, it's massively improved my confidence. So now that I've I've got a blog and I've got a regular cadence and people enjoy it, it's like, oh, maybe what else can I do? Like maybe I can go and speak at an event. Maybe I can go, and I've done a couple other bits for the community this year, and uh, sorry, last year. And I, I'm coming in, bouncing into this year going, right, how many blogs can I do? Um, I don't want to overdo it, obviously, but I've just got a massive spring in my step because I've achieved something I wanted to do for a long time. And first and foremost, I've just done it for me. Like, I want to do my blog for my memory so I can write some stuff down and just so I can get some identity and some purpose. And I want to help people. It's the first and foremost thing I've done. Yeah. Um, it's just, yeah, it takes a bit of work, obviously, because you have to, you know, I think that's part of that requirement to be an MVP. It's not the sharing, but can you do it on a relatively consistent basis? Right. And I'm quite lucky that, you know, I can sit down on a Sunday and I can do what I want. I can watch sport. I can write a blog. Um, I kind of get a day to myself, which is I'm very lucky. So I, know, I appreciate other people don't have that that support and opportunity. Um, but I used to waste that Sunday and just like, literally do nothing. Yeah. Um, I thought, you know what? I can start being a bit more productive 
and just write some cool stuff and build some cool apps. I've been building, trying to build some solutions that other people can download for free and see my code and maybe use it in their tenants to help them. Um, and I want to do some more of that because I, when I enjoy building apps anyway, like I've just, well, I've been doing it for years. I love it. Um, it's great to teach other people to build apps, but I do like building my own at time to time. But if I can then put that app up in a, in a gallery somewhere, um, like the samples gallery that, um, you know, is run for the power platform and other people download it and use my stuff. Um, I like spending time just building things for other people. And again, it's, I get benefit. I get to practice. I get to raise my confidence and stay up to date with the latest tools and techniques and features. But I can also sort of provide those things for the people to go and use for free. It's like, I just brings a smile to my face doing stuff like that. It might sound a bit cheesy, but yeah, it's addictive. Yeah, um, no, it's it's, it's very really much like it's like a runner's high. I mean, definitely when yeah, somebody has it, yeah. it, it like it changes the course of your day, you know. And depending on what you, you who you helped and how much you helped them, you know, maybe maybe your week, like, you're just on yeah. that runner's so high. On, I can wake up in the morning. Obviously, they you know I'm lucky. My blog is viewed by all over the world. Well, I think it is. I mean, VPN from anywhere these days, of course. But you know, I can wake up in the in the morning and I've got an email saying, "Hey, someone's left a comment on your blog," and it's just like someone saying, "Oh, thanks." And yeah. that's the, what a wonderful start to my day. It's brilliant. Like I've helped someone. Cool. And I, off I go. And it's, it gives me the the impetus to keep writing because um, I enjoy writing anyway. Um, and doing other events just to help people out. Because again, going back to what Lewis said to me, if you help one person, yeah. then happy days, right? Big well, tick in the box, and it yeah. makes you smile. Well, the other side too is that is like realize that like everything comes to an end eventually if Microsoft changed their program or shuts down the program or whatever it is. And, and, and I've heard some people comments like, well, then I'll just, I, I would stop doing a lot of what I do. I'm like, I, I would be doing exactly the same stuff yes. regardless. I was doing it before the award. I'll be doing it after the award because uh, you know, again, when you can do this, like, look, I understand like if you retire from a job, if you're no longer building power platform solutions, you won't that'll maybe you blog about something entirely different yeah, yeah. But the stuff that i'm doing i mean I, I i think you know into retirement i will be a technologist i will be yeah. monitoring talking about sharing the experience with like when yeah. i was got started in id <laughs> back in the early 1990s you know this is what i experienced i'll be doing that until i'm up into my 70s 80s really? i'm sure and do you know why because it makes you happy right and in in our circles of people that i trust over in the uk there's a lot of people say like if you're reaching for that award and it's making you miserable or unhappy don't do it yeah. like no one's holding a gun to your head to say hey you know what you must write blogs you must get this award do it because you're happy and i'm exactly the same i said in a chat yesterday with keith atherton um another well-known mvp and uh, we're saying that you know if we get renewed don't get renewed I'm not overly stressing it next year or the year after. I'm going to carry on doing this stuff because I enjoy it because it puts a smile on my face. And right. like we said earlier on with that employee a month, you don't get employee a month every month. You know, you might get it one month. You might not get it the next month. It might be the same with the MVP award. I might get it one year, might not get it the other. It's cool, but I'm going to carry on doing my stuff because it yeah. makes me happy. And first and foremost, that's the, you do things because they're fun. And if they don't fun, if they're not fun, stop doing them, do something else that's fun, right? That's, that, yeah. that's the bottom line, I think. Completely agree. Well, Craig, listen, I, I know we're, uh, uh, it, it's, it's great to connect. We're, we're working uh, the similar, you're in the, the, the business app side of things, but I always think it's like once a SharePoint person, always a SharePoint person. So 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And we talked earlier on, didn't we, about like how thick and fast updates are coming um, yeah. since, since COVID. They've been super, super fast. I do remember my SharePoint 2010 on premise days where you got two patches a year. And it was just so easy to maintain, wasn't it? Like the changes were just so simple. Uh, it's a far cry from what it but is now. But also the, the gaps were wide. Well, I mean, the other side of that, though, was that the gaps were there. You knew that, okay, Microsoft's going to do two patches a year, but we're not going to see a new version for three, four years. Yeah, yeah. And so there was, it was just, it was different. Continuity, there was so much yeah, to different do to fill those gaps. Yeah. yeah. But it was but, fun. I enjoyed yeah. it. I, I, I like SharePoint. I, mean, I, I use mostly Dataverse now, but a lot of um, as pe more and more people get coming on board and having budgets for licensing, it's wicked. And it's a great tool. But SharePoint for me is like that comfy jumper. You know that one you just slob around in at home, like when you're not going out. It's like I want my comfy jumper. Like I, you don't forget your SharePoint stuff. If you like, right. you say once SharePoint, always SharePoint. Like you don't forget where those quirky little settings are, or how to build a list, or how to do lookups or whatever. And, yeah, it, it's, it's nice to play around with SharePoint every now well, and then. It's, it's nice even now to know, like, I well, it's funny, I went and did, I'm not a power platform guy, but I went and did, like, a workshop, 
uh, and, and I've built some solutions. I'm still using them on a regular basis on my, my personal tenant. Um, but it's nice like going through the workshop, I'm just like the, all the back end stuff. And we were building on SharePoint. I'm like, okay, I'm very comfortable with all that stuff. Yeah, it's nice yeah. to know a bit. To, to, it's like, you know, fixing your own car. There's a lot that I can do. Unfortunately, yeah. I own a German vehicle that I can do absolutely nothing on uh, <laughs> now, but uh, that's modern vehicles. But, um, but again, being able to go in and know, I can go into admin center. I can go, I know where to go and look and do some of the under the hood stuff besides just what is out in front in the console. It's uh, it's valuable to have those skills. And it's coming full circle because with Copilot, where's all that data pulling from? Yeah. Oh, one drive in SharePoint. Well, you know, the same thing, but it's like, hey, all uh, those SharePoint skills that I had from on-premise and in the cloud, they're coming back round to roofs and it's like, hey, like SharePoint shines again. It's good. There's a it's whole great. nother I discussion. I like I just had this yesterday. I was doing an interview and talking about how when I got started in the SharePoint world back in, so I got involved in SharePoint in 2005. In 2006, went to work for Microsoft. My first speaking gig at a conference was on metadata management and information architecture. And it was about cleaning up um, SharePoint being prepared to move to the next version. It yeah, was about yeah. search quality, like all those things. It's all the exact same, same advice, same. Yeah. you know, yeah. with that. So yeah, yeah we're coming. Yeah. Back like make sure your data is, make sure your data is right, fit for purpose and secure. Um, but yeah, it's looking yeah. at the same stuff that we've been trying to do for, for a number of years. So it's, uh, yeah, it's quite nice in a way. It's like, Ooh, you know, get to play around with SharePoint again and also it's something else to kind of then go and teach people about. Like right. if you want to get the best out of Copilot, hey, here's some SharePoint knowledge that's going to help you on your journey. And that's, again, right. Right. the next phase of my blog potentially is to kind of help people there as well, which is really cool. Yep. Well, Craig, really appreciate your time catching up. Are you going to make it over for the MVP Summit? Um, probably a bit too soon for me, yeah. but maybe next, maybe next year. That, yeah. I've, got, I've got my eye on that one for next year, I think. So if you're going to be there next year, then I'll oh, see you there. Definitely. Great. Well, uh, you know, if, if we're all renewed, of course. But, of course, uh, of course. But Craig, so for folks that want to reach out and connect with you, where are you most social? Where can they find you online? I am mostly social on LinkedIn. Um, you can find me on there. If you go to my blog, which is platformsofpower.net, um, there's links to my socials on there. Um, so yeah, that's where you can find me. I try and blog once a week. That might be once every two weeks as we move into later parts of this year. But yeah, LinkedIn and my blog is where you can find me most of the time. Excellent. Well, we'll be sure to share all of that. And thanks a lot for your time. And we'll connect soon. Thank you very much. Cheers.